Hello and welcome to the channel today. We are going to be working on my 2009 GMC Sierra with yes, the Duramax. A little bit of wood in there. Today we will be placing the instrument cluster bezel lens thing because the one that's in here currently is cracked. As you can see here, I don't know how well the camera's picking up, as you can see, there's a crack right there, right across there, and on this side too. Yeah. I don't know why it cracked, just know that it's cracked. I bought it this way. So, today, we're going to be pulling this out, this out, this out, this out, to get at this. So, stay tuned. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> flat putty knife. I know you're not supposed to use that, but I don't have one of the plastic forky things that you use to take trim pieces off, so this will have to do. And I'll be real careful. Try not to scratch anything up. So, first off, we have to get this vent out. This is, uh, might be difficult to do by hand, one hand. sure about this. Seems like it's in there pretty good. There we go. Alrighty. One down. This comes off the same way basically. This whole piece has to come out all the way across. Shifter out of the way. Uh, excuse the noise. I have to have the ignition on for this. Holy cow. Yeah, you watch these YouTube videos of these people doing this stuff. <coughs> and it always looks so easy. Sounds like you're breaking everything. It's actually rather nerve-wracking, to tell you the truth. Pretty good. <clears throat> okay. There's a plug here on your buttons. You could either unplug it or just leave it. You have to get to this screw right here and this screw right here. There, that's better. Some might have a. Uh, Seven millimeter. Some have Phillips. Mine has Torx. So we'll get a Torx wrench for that. Looks like it's probably a T15 Torx. Let's see what we got here. There's a T15. 
10. And that's not a 15, it's probably a 10. It's a 10. Put it there for safekeeping. Take this one out. I bought this truck back on Memorial Day, drove all the way down to North Carolina to pick it up. I bought it off of a uh, small lot. Oh, we have something here and something here. Um, got it at a pretty good price. much if it was a, a uh, GM product or a Ford or Dodge. I live in Michigan and I've seen uh, quite a few of them rusted really bad, hence why I went to North Carolina to pick this one up. This one lived its life. Um, okay, they're all the same screen. This one lived its life in uh, New Mexico, from what I can tell on a, a vehicle history report, and no accidents that I can tell, but uh, I can see that uh, at the very least it was uh, clear-coated once again. And, uh, but no reports on the car facts for it. The only report on the Carfax was at 69,000 miles the dealer replaced the flex plate. I don't know if I should have concern over that or not. As you can see, let me see if I can get this up. And that was at 69,000 and we're at 139,648 now. And uh, when I bought it, it had 133. And because it is Michigan, and I don't want to destroy this truck like I did my Silverado with the salt and the rust and all that good stuff, this one lives its life in the garage in the wintertime. Right, let's bring the wheel down again. Let's get that out of the way. Must be really dusty in New Mexico. Look at the dust on that thing. We'll clean all that up before it goes back in. Okay. Now, looks like uh, it's going to need a 10 millimeter for that and that. It looks like this has got to come off first to get to all that. All right. Here's the old trusty uh, putty knife. See if we can't get in here and take this thing out. There we go, that's that side. Let's see if we can get this side. There we go. And the top it looks like there's a little tab thing here. I'm guessing you pull on that. I'm not exactly sure. Never done this before, so not on on this body style vehicle. So, I don't know. I don't know what's holding it in now. Lord knows I don't want to break it. I'm taking it apart to fix it. I don't want to break it. Uh. Oh, that puppy's on there. I have to get a little screwdriver, I think. This little guy should work. Oh, look at that. Truckmaster, 54 minutes ago. Let's see what that's all about.
Splitting log. Let's get back to work. Okay. I know you guys probably can't see in here very well. But trust me when I say there's a, some kind of clip here and I can't really tell what it is. One on each side. I'm going to have to put you down for a second. There we go. Ah, these things are really in here. Ah, wow. Okay. I got that snapped loose. Those are some really good clips, I do have to say. These are still buffering out in the garage, you know, you don't get much uh, signal from the house. Yeah, you can see the lens is cracked right here, a lot of dust cracked right here, right across there. So we'll take this out and uh, we'll go from there. All right. Need a uh, like a seven millimeter. Right here and seven. Yeah, I need to take mine to the car wash too. Mine's quite dirty, also. Well, dirty by my standards, anyhow. But all that wood that you see that's in the back was from when I went up to the property to get some wood to burn in the fireplace. Understand. Usually it uh, comes in pretty good. Not so much today. But we'll pause them. Yeah. And the fun never ends. Yeah, I heat my home with a uh, fireplace insert that I have in the living room. It does a very good job. Um, sometimes it's kind of a pain with uh, the mess that it makes with bark peelings and whatnot. But uh, just to give you an idea, I was just talking with, the, with my wife this morning about the gas bill because I ran out of wood. That's why there's wood in the back of the truck. Um, for a couple weeks in December, um, two, maybe three weeks, not exactly sure and uh, it was really cold here but prior to that I was um, burning wood to heat the house and she said the last month's gas bill was like a hundred and fifty dollars where the previous month's bill was forty so just to give you an idea is it worth it I think so I definitely think so. Okay, those look like the same. Um, it gets to be a lot of work at times. And other times it's uh, just whatever. You know, you, you do what you got to do, right? It's the name of the game. Just do what you got to do. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. tell you, these newer cars, they really don't give you a lot of room to uh, work on anything. I've worked on several cars. I've done all kinds of uh, uh, repairs. I mean, 
from body work to transmissions to engine rebuilds. As you can see, I don't know if you saw it or if you caught it in one of the pan screens. Um, I have a shelf right next to the Dirty Max that has uh, a bunch of engine parts on it. Well, that's actually a 301 Pontiac that came out of uh, my daughter's um, 81 um, Trans Am uh, that she got from uh, from us. We sold it to her. She wanted it, and it was um, part of the family for a long time. It used to be my mother-in-law's. And uh, she decided to sell it, and uh, we bought it and kept it for a little while. I bought it with a rod knock, of course, and uh, I put another 301 in there that I got from the junkyard, and that didn't pan out so well. And that's some junkyard buys, you know. You gotta kind of stay away from them sometimes. As good as the deal might seem, they're not necessarily the case. Out without breaking anything. And there's a plug here, a little tabby thing, and that's it. A little tabby thing. Pop her down, and she's out. Alrighty. Now the one I got. Doesn't look exactly like this one, but it said it was on the ad. I got it from eBay for like I don't know, sixty, seventy dollars or something like that. This one says it's made in China, but the ad says that it's an original, not Chinese knockoff. Blah 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 blah. Of course, you know how that lies. Cause if it was an original, it'd have that sticker on there, and it don't have that sticker. It doesn't have the little boss description there on how to take it apart and you can see it's cracked yeah so if anybody knows why this would have cracked please let me know I'd like to know myself it's kind of I don't want it to happen again you know so now we have to figure out how this comes apart and we'll do that by looking at this one. Oh, it looks like there's little lock ears yeah, these little locking tabs here. Right here. It looks like there's several of them all the way around. So let me get the little screwdriver and we'll pop that baby off and we'll be in business. Yeah. Let me just put you up here. Let's stay. Incidentally, when I uh, bought this truck, it's got the NAV system in it, and uh, I just happened to uh, go through the saved addresses that were in there, and that's how I found out pretty much where the guy lived. So, just remember that, folks, when you uh, sell your vehicle, you plug in your home address into your, look at that, that was easy enough. Plug in your home address into your nav system. Make sure you uh, delete it before you sell your truck or a car, whatever the case may be. Because uh, you could easily find out who used to own it by looking at that information, like I did. And I was able to find out that the guy who used to own the truck lived on a dirt road, so and it's all the dust, dirt. It's got uh, quite a bit of that. Let's take a look at the back side. Are there any identifying marks between the two? And this one, yeah. That's the original here. 
there are some marks in it. Delphi part number and all that. And this one just says made in China. As you can see here in the middle. I don't know how well that picks up on the camera, but yeah. Okay. I guess it doesn't matter where it was made as long as it works, right? back in. Uh, this has a, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but it has a clear protective film. Uh, the sound of new stuff. I'm going to leave that on until I get it, get it in there so I'm not as to scratch the lens any. We don't want to do that. After all, we are replacing it. We've got to make it look good. All right. In she goes. Plug her back in. like new money. Everybody likes new money, right? I know I do. I like new money. Okay, folks. That's what you got to try not to do. Dropping screws. You lose them in a dash and then you got to take the whole thing all apart. Taking things apart. As far as necessary, is okay. A couple more screws and we'll get her all back together. Oh, crap. And that one just went, see, I just told you not to drop the screws and I just did. Dang it. Now we got to do it all over again. See, my friends, this is what I'm saying. to be careful. As careful as I was, I still managed to drop it. Oh boy. Let's see if we can find the screw. Oh. She's gone. She's gone in the abyss. We have to tear her apart. Even further. Isn't this great? Bunsville. to pause you out here so I uh, give me some more lighting and see what's going on here okay we're back I went and got a flashlight let's see if we can find this thing I don't know where it went yeah look at that that screw looks like it's loose 
That might be part of the rattle I have in my dash. Hmm. Oh, look at there. There it is, right there. You see it? Get the old trusty magnet out. There we go. We got her. Yeah. Like fishing for dollars. Alrighty. Let's try this again, but now that I see that, yeah, that's definitely where a rattle's coming from. Look at that. Always at an idle, as many of you Duramax owners know, that uh, they do seem to hum a little at an idle. And because of that, I get a getting a vibration out of the dash that I could just make go away with just one little touch of the dash. There we go. Nice and tight. And check this guy. Oh, that one's loose too. Wonder if that had anything to do with why it cracked. That's nice and tight now. Any other screws I need to check? down here. That feels tight. That feels tight. Just look around. I look molested in any way. Another screw right here. That's tight. Try this again without dropping the screw, of course. This time it's kind of hard to do with one hand while holding a flashlight. I'll put the flashlight down. Like this guy right in here. And you can hear everything starting up. Car to work on any day. So much more room to work on. Wow. He does not want to go in. There we go. again without dropping any screws. That feels like it started. Get her in the hole. Like so. Not wrong hole. That's what she said. Not driver. I just don't want, him, want all the noise. noise. Normally I would have used the driver just to make it faster. But you know, as you can see, basic tools, it works just fine. Just have to be patient. That's the key to working on anything. Patience. Gotta have patience. And it, it doesn't pay to get mad either when you're doing a lot of this stuff, something grows wrong, like how I dropped that screw and 
Thought I lost it all the way down in the dash. And didn't. I didn't get mad. And just fix the problem. You know, just go get the go get a flashlight and a magnet. Look for it. Found it. Got it. Done. It's the end of, just doesn't pay to get mad. All you're doing is uh, aggravating yourself, frustrating yourself, and uh, it doesn't accomplish anything. Doesn't accomplish anything at all. Okay. Well. The rest of it is pretty much the same as how I took it apart, so we'll come back when I'm done. Okay, we're back. I had a little problem with uh, lining up that top there. You can see that seam right here. It wasn't lining up very well. All I had to do was lift up on this bezel and it snapped right in. So, it's all good. You can see no more cracked dash. Looks good. Looks great. I'm happy. Nice and shiny. No dust. This has been giving me a little bit of a problem going back in. I want to go in as easy as it looks. For whatever reason. You see the dust. I wiped everything down. All the parts that I popped off, I wiped them all down. I see this doesn't want to go back in. There we go. She's hanging up. I don't know what she's hanging up on. That's the thing. Start from this end. Yep, yeah, that's the trick. See? Look at that. Right in. Beautiful. Clean off my little screen here for my nav. More piece and we are done. Oh, I didn't wipe this one off. Yeah, you can see the dust. See that? That's what uh, living on a dusty, dirty road is all about. Made in Mexico. All right. Just like most stuff, right? Just scooch that in there. Minor up the ducky. Let's open her up so we can see inside there. Make sure she's all lined up good. coming out. She wants to be difficult going back in. There we go. That's him. Alright. I'll finish wiping her down. Yeah. Look at that. Like I said, she sits in the garage in the winter time because here in Michigan the salt on the roads and all that other stuff. Pretty bad. And she's sat here for, oh, since before Christmas, and today is uh, February 3rd. I uh, haven't started her up during that time. Other than once, when I went to get wood, um, a few weeks ago, well, maybe a week ago. So she's been sitting here ever since, and she's been running fine. 
She starts right up every time. She's never given me a problem. So maybe we'll do a cold start for you guys. How's that sound? As you can see, I have my switch. I haven't figured out where to put it yet. I was having it just tucked up under here just to uh, just to hide it so nobody knows. Just tucked it in that little hole like that. Put this cover back on. Now nobody knows. No holes in my dash. And, you know, you don't switch it much off anyhow. So. Wasn't that big a deal not to mount it. Someday I might mount it. I don't know. I was thinking maybe a good spot would be, while I had this apart, is like right up in the center here. There seems like there's just enough room. So, you know, when you're driving, you won't see it. It'd be right there. It'd be a good spot, I think. You just reach, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. Good idea, bad idea. All right. Let's see how she works. for today hope you enjoyed the video like always like and subscribe have a good day